This video and many others are brought to you by, well, you. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you want to go the extra mile, please consider checking out my Patreon and channel membership for some goodies. Hello everyone, Golden Nova here, and so, as it was promised, so it shall be delivered. Upon the 10,000th subscription, the pact was sealed, and so I ventured forth, cataloging all there was to know about one of the greatest Xyz archetypes ever known. Its members have seen play in a variety of decks spanning years of competitive play, and now, we're going to begin the process of crafting the definitive compendium of their entire lineage. At least until we get another wave of support. Knowing me, it's bound to happen. But first, let's get acquainted with the character they're tied to. Yuma Tsukumo is the Yu-Gi-Oh! protagonist that is in possession of the most chaotic gremlin energy out of all of them, and that's including the one that's possessed by an actual chaotic gremlin. But it's all balanced out by another companion spirit, Astral. They're an ethereal entity from Astral World who joins up with Yuma on a quest to restore their lost memories by collecting the number monsters. And while we may one day bring our focus to bear on the wide swath of number cards, for now we're going to be focusing, mostly, on just one. Number 39, Yu Topia. Well, in a bit. I'd be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to talk about the cards that were instrumental in setting up Utopia in the anime. And while they're pretty splashable, it would feel pretty wrong to leave them out. Because Utopia isn't the only monster that Yuma is known for, he also wielded the Gagagas, as well as the whole Onomat pantheon. And what the heck is an Onomat? Well, it's short for Onomatopoeia, an umbrella term for words meant to emulate sounds, which you see in a lot of comics. You know, your bangs, your zooms, your kachows, and they're used to similar effect in manga. If you've seen basically any JoJo panel, you know what I'm talking about. And all the major themes used by Yuma are their own distinct archetype, but are tied together by Onomat cards that reference all of them. Gagaga, Ga Ga, Go Go Go, Dodo Do, 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 and Zubaba are all Japanese onomatopoeia. Which makes sense, I know this is something a young me would really love, so it's only natural that Yuma would too. And so, that's where we're gonna start. Get ready for some vocal warm-ups, practice your tongue twisters, and grab your favorite Xyz monster, because it's time to sound off with Onomats. So, what's the deal with Onomats? Well, by and large, we've got a lot of effects that throw monsters onto the board, as well as level modulation to make sure they fit with one another for Xyz summons. However, we've also got a lot of other effects, because some of them have to stand on their own merits. So we'll go through each theme to make sure they all get the spotlight, including a very small one that's left out of other Onomat effects, the Achachas, a sound effect for something burning. Achacha Archer is a level 3 Fire Warrior monster with 1200 attack and 600 defense, and when normal or flip summoned, you inflict 500 points of damage to your opponent. This pairs nicely with Achacha Chanbara, who is also a level 3 Fire Warrior monster, sporting 1400 attack and 400 defense. During either player's turn, when a card or effect is activated that'll inflict damage when it resolves, you can special summon Chanbara from your hand, and if you do, inflict 400 points of damage to your opponent. So you get to deal a total of 900 points of damage and summon two level 3 monsters? This sounds... a lot like Barbar. -Bar. Did I accidentally write Burning Abyss Explained? I'm also throwing Chachaka Archer in here as well. They're a level 6 Wind Warrior monster with 1200 attack and 1800 defense, and once per turn they can target a spell or trap on the field and destroy it. They're entirely removed from the whole burning aesthetic, which I suppose is why it's Chachaka and not Achacha, but they sound similar enough, okay? Besides, what better way exists to get spell and trap removal onto the board through the effect of Flying Kamikari number 1? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, let's get to the good stuff. It's time for Gagagas. It's an onomatopoeia for physical impacts, kinda like POW, which is reflected in the anime by their monsters predominantly throwing hands at their opponent. Remember, that means this kid is an accomplished martial artist, so don't mess with him. Let's start with the most iconic, Gagaga Magician. They're a level 4 dark spellcaster monster with 1500 attack and 1000 defense. You can only control one of them, and once per turn, you can declare a level from 1 to 8, and Gagaga -Ga -Ga Magician's level matches what you declared until the end of the turn. However, it cannot be used as synchro material ever, so no 5D's shenanigans. We are trying to promote a new summoning mechanic after all. Magician would set the tone for the rest of the theme to come, and grants you access to a wide variety of generic Xyz monsters, making them an asset to any deck that struggles to mobilize the right levels. It also sets the trend of Gagagas having the most fantastic drip. Look at this nerd, it's like if Kakashi was cosplaying as Dark Magician, I love it. 
And the Dark Magician comparison wouldn't be complete without Gagaga -ga -ga Girl, a level 3 dark spellcaster monster with 1000 attack and 800 defense, and they can target a Gagaga -ga -ga Magician you control to have Girl match their level. And on top of that, any Xyz monster that uses only Girl and other Gagaga -ga -ga monsters gains an effect where, when Xyz summoned, you can target a special summoned monster your opponent controls and its attack permanently becomes zero. So yeah, on top of anything else the Xyz monster you make does, it also blanks an opponent's monster's attack, an especially devastating move against Link monsters. It's a shame it doesn't also special summon itself if you control Gagaga -ga -ga Magician, but we've got other cards that can handle that for us. What's really on my mind right now is how much cell phone envy I have. Really wishing I could still put cool little charms on my phone. Now, if you are looking for a monster that won't take up your normal summon, Gagaga -ga -ga Clerk fills that role. They're a level 2 Earth Warrior monster with 400 attack and 800 defense, and if you control a Gagaga -ga -ga monster other than Clerk, you can special summon them from your hand. And if you want one that also modulates its level, you've got Gagaga -ga -ga Child. They're a level 2 Dark Spellcaster monster with 800 attack and 1200 defense, and if you control a Gagaga -ga -ga monster besides Child, you can special summon them from your hand. And when you do, you can target a Gagaga -ga -ga you control with a different level than Child and have Child match it, though you cannot conduct your battle phase the turn you activate that effect. It does suck that you have to lose out on your battle phase, especially if what you are looking to exceed summon is battle focused, so it's kind of a desperation play. Clerk can be used if you have access to other effects that will modulate their level, while Child is here if you need to be a bit more self-sufficient. Now, I don't know how a kid like this made it into My Gaga Academia, but I'm gonna chalk it up to a clerical error. And as long as we're talking about the lower leveled ones, let's go over Gagaga -ga -ga Sister. They're a level 2 dark spellcaster monster with 200 attack and 800 defense, and when normal summoned, you can add a Gagaga -ga -ga spell or trap from your deck to your hand, which is amazing because some of the spells and trap support we have access to is bonkers. You can also have them target another Gagaga -ga -ga monster you control, and the levels of Sister and the targeted monster each become equal to their combined levels. So if you target a Gagaga -ga -ga magician that has not activated its effect yet, both Sister and magician become level 6. And that's important because the highest level magician can go by themselves is 8. So Sister opens up rank 9s and 10s. Imagine it, you can get their levels so high you can make Gustav Max. Annika Boom would be so proud. For more level modulation, let's take a look at Gagaga -ga -ga Caesar. They're a level 3 Earth Warrior monster with 1800 attack and 600 defense, and cannot attack unless you control another face-up Gagaga -ga -ga monster. And they also can't be used as synchro material. Once per turn, they can banish any monster from your grave to have all Gagagas -ga -ga you control become the level of the banished monster until the end of the turn. And thankfully, they impose zero restrictions on what you can summon. Natively, you have levels 2, 3, and 4, and you can splash in higher level monsters if you want to dabble in the deeper end of the Xyz pool. And if you want to be extra spicy, you can add it to another deck that likes having its monsters banished, like Shiranui or Metaphys. It's really helpful for keeping your team on the same level. Gagaga -ga -ga Mancer is a level 4 dark spellcaster monster with 100 attack and defense. Once per turn, you can target a Gagaga -ga -ga monster in your grave and special summon it, but you're locked into only special summoning Gagaga -ga -ga monsters for the rest of the turn. Kind of feels like it defeats the purpose of them being an Xyz toolbox, but whatever. Also, if detached from an Xyz monster as material to activate that monster's effect, you can target any face-up Xyz monster you control, and it gains 500 attack until the end of the turn. The summon restriction really blows, but the kinds of Gagaga -ga -ga monsters you can make with them do benefit from the attack gain effect. For instance, it makes Gagaga -ga -ga Samurai's double attack even more potent, and while Gagaga -ga -ga Cowboy is mostly known for cleaning up games in defense position, they do have a pretty strong attack buff and debuff effect that a spare 500 attack does wonders for. But you're not fooling anyone with that cheeky name. You bring Gagagas -ga -ga back from the grave, that's 100% some necromancer behavior right there, I'm calling the paladins. Gagaga -ga -ga Gaga -ga 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 Gardener. <laughs> Gaga -ga -ga Gardna is a level 4 Earth Warrior monster with 1500 attack and 2000 defense. When an opponent's monster declares a direct attack, you can special summon Gardna from your hand, and when targeted for an attack, you can discard a card to keep Gardna from being destroyed by that battle. At first, this seems like a really out of left field type of effect considering what we've talked about, but it does help put a body on board that you can pair with another Gaga -ga -ga when it rolls back around to your turn, and does a pretty impressive job of keeping you safe in the meantime. Though whenever the eventual Gardna archetype shows up, I'm not sure they're going to be much help. 
Gagaga -ga Head is the biggest Gagaga -ga -ga we've seen thus far, and they're a level 6 dark spellcaster monster with 2100 attack and defense. But if your opponent controls monsters and you control no monsters, you can normal summon Head without tributing as a level 4 monster. And when normal summoned, you can target up to 2 Gagaga -ga -ga monsters in your grave, except other copies of itself, and special summon them, but you can't special summon monsters for the rest of the turn, except via an Xyz summon using only Gagaga -ga -ga monsters as material. And an Xyz monster using Head while it's on the field as Xyz material gains an effect where you draw a card when it's Xyz summoned. This card pairs extremely well with Caesar, as they can bring all the different levels you summon into line. And Gagaga -ga -ga Girl can add to the draw you get by making one of your opponent's monsters easy pickings. And while you can only make that one Xyz monster that turn, you have access to any generic that you can modulate the levels for. You can even get some of those nutty ones that require 3 material. They're really good at putting together a big play, which is why they make for the best head of operations. Alright, let's go over those extra deck monsters. Gagaga -ga -ga Samurai is a rank 4 Earth Warrior Xyz monster with 1900 attack and 1600 defense, requiring any two level 4 monsters. Once per turn, they can detach a material to target a Gagaga -ga -ga monster you control, and it can make a second attack during each battle phase that turn. Also, when another monster you control is targeted for an attack while Samurai is in attack position, you can change Samurai to defense position, and if you do, change the attack target to Samurai and proceed to damage calculation. Not a bad level 4 if I'm being honest, they can potentially put out 3800 points of damage, 4800 if you detach Mancer from them, then can draw away attacks from other monsters while preventing battle damage. It makes sense why this doesn't see a lot of play, these kinds of effects aren't exactly going to be tearing up the battlefield, but it's great on both the offense and defense meaning this dual wielder serves dual purposes in your duels. Gagaga -ga -ga Cowboy is a rank 4 Earth Warrior Xyz monster with 1500 attack and 2400 defense, requiring any two level 4 monsters as material. Once per turn, you can detach a material to apply an effect based on what position Cowboy is in. Very Morphtronic of you. If they're in attack position, you can detach a material to have Cowboy gain 1000 attack and make the monster they're battling lose 500 attack for a total net change of 1500, and if they're in defense position, you can detach a material to win the game. Okay, technically it burns your opponent for 800, but the way it's used normally might as well win you the game. While the attack position effect can be helpful in clearing out some big monsters, the lack of restrictions on it meant you could leave that big offensive push to your other monsters, and any amount of remaining life points at or below 800 meant victory was a single overlay away. In fact, it was so prolific that some underhanded duelists who weren't even running cowboy in their lists just had to say they were going to make cowboy to get their opponent to concede. This old cowpoke hasn't seen much play in a while, mostly due to the fact that extra decks are more cramped than ever, but has nonetheless left its mark on the game for for some time to come, and any beatdown deck that can lean into the rank 4 toolbox always has this trusty iron at their side. Which does seem thematically inappropriate. You'd think considering the Wild West theme, it'd bring the game to a draw. Gagaga -ga, -ga, ga Magician, the extra ga is very important, is a rank 4 dark spellcaster Xyz monster with 2000 attack and defense. They can detach a material to target an Xyz monster in your grave and special summon it, but its effects are negated. Not an issue though, as it's mainly used to facilitate its second effect. When it's an Xyz material on a utopic future monster, that Xyz monster gains an effect where, during the main phase, you can detach 2 material to target an Xyz monster you control, and until the end of the turn, negate its effects while changing its attack to 4000. Now, one might ask how you use an Xyz monster as material without a rank up magic spell since they have no levels. It flies in the face of every rule ever printed on the subject. But utopic future monsters specifically require Xyz monsters of the same rank, except number monsters. So it's rather helpful that Gaga Gaga -ga -ga Magician is an Xyz monster that can summon another rank 4 to help out with your future plays. Alright. Now it's time for our spells and traps. Gagaga -ga -ga Academy Emergency Network is a normal spell that you can only activate if your opponent controls monsters and you control none. You special summon a Gagaga -ga -ga from your deck, but you can't special summon any other monsters that turn except through Xyz summoning. That's a... Gosh, this card goes off the rails really quickly. Without the ability to special summon your main deck monsters, you're down to your only normal summon to get the material ready for that Xyz summon. Like, if it locked you into only summoning Xyz monsters from the extra deck, this wouldn't be half bad. But, 
For now, it seems like the only thing this card is good for is setting up the My Hero Academia reference earlier in the video. Gagaga -ga -ga Bolt is a normal spell you can activate if you control a Gagaga -ga -ga monster, and it targets a card on the field and destroys it. Ah, uh, good ol' one for one removal. It really helped the deck be the powerhouse it is in Duel Links. Not only did you have access to a strong double attacker and temporary monster removal, you have the ability to grab a flexible problem solver, either through drawing or searching it with Gagaga -ga -ga Sister, a move that can really energize your game plan. Gagaga -ga -ga Draw is a normal spell that has you banishing three Gagaga -ga -ga monsters from your grave to draw two cards. Great addition if you're playing pure Gagagas, -ga -ga but not going to be much help if you're splashing them into another deck. I mean, maybe if we get to a point where Gagaga -ga -ga extra deck monsters become more extenders into other Gagagas -ga -ga for play sequences, I might change my tune. And I know, Pot of Greed is an outstanding card, but until we see some more advancement from the theme, we're gonna have to draw a line here. Gagaga -ga -ga Tag gives all the Gagagas -ga -ga you currently control a 500 attack boost for each Gagaga -ga -ga monster you currently control until your next standby phase. That seems a bit at odds with the Xyz focus. We end up losing quite a few monsters by stacking them on top of each other, but it's nice that we have the option. We do have quite a few effects that summon out free Gagagas -ga -ga for the material, so being able to switch to aggro if your opponent tries to artifact scythe you is a pretty funny maneuver. And if you can manage to get, say, samurai onto the board as well as multiple Gagagas, -ga -ga then your double attacker just got swole. So now it all makes sense. This card is all the Gagagas -ga -ga doing one of those Twitter challenge things where you tag people, getting stronger the more people you rope in. Dang, this school's pretty social media savvy. Gagaga -ga -ga Wind is a normal spell that special summons a Gagaga -ga -ga monster from your hand as a level 4 monster. Now, most of our good ones already are level 4, but as the card art shows, this is useful for modulating the levels of monsters that don't do a good job of it on their own. Girl can only match Magician by themselves, but if you have Mancer or Gardna on the board, they're pretty much stuck. It can also get Head out of your hand if it's stuck otherwise, and while Clerk has little trouble special summoning themselves, doing so while making their level match someone else's is a huge assist. It's a minus one, sure, but it's also really helpful in setting up for a big play. Gagaga -ga -ga Back is a quick play spell that you can activate the turn a Gagaga -ga -ga monster you control was destroyed by battle and sent to the grave. On resolution, you special summon as many monsters as possible that were destroyed by battle this turn in face-up defense position, then take 600 points of damage for each monster special summoned this way. It's a very, very specific soul charge, but does cost you a lot less, though having to be destroyed by battle is its own kind of additional cost. Most attacks are spent attacking directly, and while you can thankfully force this by using Gagaga -ga -ga Samurai's attack redirection effect, your opponent is more likely to use effect removal on your monsters so you don't inadvertently make a comeback. Gagaga -ga -ga Revenge is an equipped card that targets a Gagaga -ga -ga monster in your grave, special summons it, then gets equipped to that monster. If Revenge leaves the field, so does the equipped monster. And if Revenge is sent to the grave because the equipped monster was used as Xyz material, all Xyz monsters you currently control gain 300 attack. This is just a really outstanding card, but I guess when you reprint Premature Burial, that goes without saying. It doesn't negate any of the monster's effects either, so your Magician can modulate, Girl can match Magician, and Caesar can set up your entire field, all while giving a little extra boost to the monster you make on top of it. And it does not fall short in the style department either, as it has the monster you summon erupting from a coffin. That's not a Yu-Gi-Oh effect, that's a pro wrestling intro. Gagaga -ga -ga Guard is a normal trap you can activate if you control two or more face-up Gagaga -ga -ga monsters, and for the rest of the turn, all monsters you currently control can't be destroyed by battle or card effect. This is another card that rewards you for going wide with Gagagas -ga -ga instead of investing into a single monster. And while I'd usually advise against leaving what amounts to a bunch of vanillas on the board, sometimes you just need to keep your stuff safe if you're locked out of making certain plays. On top of your opponent stunning you with something, it can also be useful for keeping your stuff on board to wait out any restriction you might have put yourself under. For instance, Mancer sets up all the monsters you need to activate this card, but if you want to use them to make anything other than a Gaga, -ga -ga, then this card makes for a pretty good guard. Gagaga -ga -ga Rush is a normal trap you can activate when any number of face-up Gagaga -ga -ga monsters you control are targeted by an opponent's monster effect. You negate the effect, destroy the monster that targeted your Gagaga, -ga -ga, then burn your opponent for damage equal to the destroyed monster's attack or defense, whichever is higher. Holy smokes! I mean, it doesn't really hold a candle to Gravedigger's trap hole, but as far as negation that punishes your opponent goes, this is a close second. It's searchable with Sister and keeps your combo pieces from being interacted with. Well... 
at least from targeted monster effects. It's not gonna do much against activation negation. It also kind of blows that, aside from Samurai, there really isn't a Gagaga -ga -ga boss monster you can back up with this card. Most of the generic Xyz you want to flex into with this won't get any protection from it. And unfortunately, if Gaga Gaga -ga Magician is any indication, they really aren't in a rush to print one anytime soon. Gagaga -ga -ga Shield is a normal trap that targets a spellcaster you control, becomes equipped to them, and twice per turn, that monster cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. This is a nifty little card that grants some durability to your monsters while providing some niche applications. For instance, you can equip this to Maiden with Eyes of Blue, triggering their effect to summon a Blue Eyes, and now it's that much harder for your opponent to get rid of them. But I have some umbrage with this, because while it's a Gagaga -ga -ga card, it doesn't even work with half the Gagagas -ga -ga you have. We've got almost as many warriors as spellcasters. I guess it just goes to show where the school likes to put all of its funding. Next, we have our Go-Go-Go's. They're a series of mostly level 4 Earth Attribute Rock Monsters, we'll get to the exceptions in a bit, and their onomatopoeia is associated with a menacing kind of rumble. If you've ever played a game and things start to shake or get really tense before the bad thing happens, it's kind of like that. Go-Go-Go -go -go Golem has 1800 attack and 1500 defense, and once per turn while in defense position, they cannot be destroyed by battle. So it's got a bit of bulk if it's forced to play defensively, and otherwise has some really solid stats. But without any kind of effect to help throw them out onto the field, they feel more like they're standing around than go 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 going. Go 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 Gorum has 2300 attack and zero defense, and if summoned, its battle position is changed. Also, if they're destroyed on the field and sent to the grave, you have to send a go 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 monster from your deck to the grave. That's a large boy, so it makes sense they would force it to defense position if you normal summon them. And if they're destroyed, then at least you can set up some of your other go go go's that use the grave. Also, I don't know what it is, but Gorum just looks like a meme image. Like, here, take a look. Go 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 Giant has 2,000 attack and zero defense, and when normal summoned, you can target a Go 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 monster in your grave and special summon it in defense position, then change Giant to defense position. Also, if Giant attacks, it goes full goblin attack force and is changed to defense position at the end of the battle phase. This is a pretty great way to summon back Gorum, as it'll just change to attack position after it's been summoned. So you can either go on the offensive with a 2300 attack monster, or overlay for a rank 4. I hear Gallant Granite is pretty good for rock themes. It might have to take Take things easy after it attacks, but it's like they always say, the best defense is a good giant throwing 2000 attack at your opponent before it gets tired. Go 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 Gigas has 0 attack and 2200 defense, and while they're in the grave and you special summon a Go 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 monster, you can special summon Gigas from your grave, but you can't conduct your battle phase the turn you activate that effect. It might be a bit overkill considering the drawback, we already have a fair number of effects to build up our Go 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 garrison, but if you can trigger this on your opponent's turn, then you've got a pretty sweet blocker with no downside. But make sure not to overwork it, the Gigas economy is rough enough as it is. Go 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 Ghost is a dark zombie monster with 1900 attack and zero defense, and if special summoned, you can target specifically a Go 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 Golem in your grave, special summon it, then change Ghost to defense position. This forms a pretty neat chain where you can summon Ghost with Giant, which can then summon Golem for 3 material. Toss in a Gigas for 4 material, and now you've got 2 rank 4s at your disposal. With that much advantage, your opponent won't stand a Ghost! Go 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 Golem Golden Form is my favorite card in the lineup, and I'll leave that to you to figure out why. They sport a question mark attack and 1500 defense, they can't be normal summoned or set, and must be special summoned from your hand by tributing any Go 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 monster. Their attack becomes double the attack of the monster you tributed, any battle damage they inflict to your opponent is halved, which is fair, and once per turn during either player's turn, if any monster effect is activated on your opponent's field, Golden Form here loses exactly 1500 attack, and if it does, the effect is negated. So it's like a very watered down light and darkness dragon. You won't be stopping any hand traps or grave effects, but the upside is that this card can get huge. Even on the smaller end, Tributing Golem gets you to 3600, and Gorum gets you to a whopping 46. It can also help with your damage output by tributing something like a giant after its summon effect has been used. Sure, the damage it deals is halved, but it's better than having a monster in defense position that can't help with that. Now, instead of chilling for the turn, Golden Form takes their place as an obelisk that can insulate your board against negation bodies like Boral Sword or Dragoon. Just the kind of performance I'd expect from another member of the Golden Gallery.
Go Go Go, Aristera, and Dexia have 0 attack and 2200 defense. And while another Go 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 monster is on the field, your opponent cannot target Go 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 monsters for attacks, and they can't be targeted by your opponent's card effects while on the field. And any Xyz monster that uses only A and D and other Go 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 monsters gains an effect where, when Xyz summoned, you target an opponent's monster, change it to defense position, and if you do, its defense becomes 0. So it's kind of like Gaga Ga Girl, giving you a big bonus for only using monsters on your theme. But this one is a tad less deadly. Unless you make a monster with piercing, then you're in the clear. Un unless your opponent only has link monsters. But that's becoming less and less of a concern as time goes on, and honestly, the on-field effect that prevents attack and effect targeting is too good to pass up. Limit your opponent's options with this, and they'll play right into the palm of your hands. They've also got a single extra deck monster, number 55, Go 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 Goliath. They're a rank 4 Earth Rock Xyz monster with 2400 attack and 1200 defense, requiring any two level 4 monsters as material. They grant all your monsters an 800 defense boost, and you can detach a material to target a level 4 Earth Rock monster in your grave and add it to your hand. Excellent for recouping material for future plays, but what I like best is the ability to get back Golden Form, at which point you contribute Goliath to make a 4800 attack monster. The 800 defense boost would be nice, but we've either got big walls already like Gigas, or absolute novice defenders like Ghost and Giant, so 800 isn't going to make much of a difference. So you might as well take the opportunity to go from David to Goliath in no time flat. Our last Go 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 card is Go 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 Talisman, a continuous spell that keeps you from taking any effect damage while you control two or more Go 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 monsters. Also, once per turn, when an attack is declared involving a Go 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 monster you control, you can activate Talisman to keep your monster from being destroyed by battle. And that's actually really clutch considering all the zero defense monsters we're going to be holding onto. Ideally, you'd have turned those monsters into a more impactful Xyz one by that time, but sometimes you've got a golden form that's used its negation effect one too many times, and just needs to survive one more battle phase before they can be turned into a new monster. And hey, any card that can keep your rocks from getting smashed by a neutron blast attack is undisputably a really lucky charm. Our next stop is with the Dododos, a group of mostly Earth Warrior monsters, and their onomatopoeia is associated with the sound of heavy footfalls in quick succession, which is very well reflected reflected in their monsters. They're hefty, they're armored, and they want to make some noise. Dododo Bot is a level 4 monster and our only machine type, wielding 1800 attack and 1900 defense. They can't be normal summoned, but they can be normal set, and if they attack, they're unaffected by any other card's effects until the end of the damage step. Ah, the classic sword and board setup. I suppose it's helpful if you think you're going to attack into something like a mirror force, but because it's got a bit of a cooldown built in because of the normal setting, it takes a bit too long to reap the benefits. Besides, I thought we were trying to get bots out of games, not in them. Dododo Warrior is a level 6 monster with 2300 attack and 900 defense. You can normal summon them without tributing, but its attack becomes 1800. Also, if they attack, they negate all card effects that activate in your opponent's grave until the end of the damage step. It's some... neat coverage. Not only will it stop any effect of the monster you destroy from triggering in the grave, but will also stop other cards that would trigger in the grave in response. But it's hardly an armades. Spells and traps are still open, as well as any effect the monster might have to retaliate with. But despite all that, it's still one of the few level 6 monsters you can just normal summon with little restriction. So if rank 6s are on the table, it'll be pretty hard to axe this card from your list. Dododo Buster is a level 6 monster with 1900 attack and 800 defense, and if only your opponent controls monsters, you can special summon them from your hand, and if you do, they become level 4. But when they're tribute summoned, you can target a Dododo monster in your grave and special summon it in defense position. So you can summon it for free as a level 4 monster, or convert one of your current monsters into a level 6 via tribute summoning, which can then revive Warrior to make those rank 6s. But those are some very specific scenarios. If you don't have the right setup for them, they are kind of a bust. Dododo Driver is a level 4 monster with 1800 attack and 200 defense, and up to twice per turn, if Driver was special summoned that turn by the effect of a Dododo monster, you can target a Dododo monster you control and either increase or decrease their level by 1. This makes it the premier option to summon off of Buster's effect for the sheer range of options it provides. You can either bring down Buster's level by 2 to make a rank 4, raise Driver's level by 2 to make a rank 6, or lower Buster by 1 and raise Driver by 1 to make a rank 5. Driver is integral for smoothing out your levels, making them a driving force in the theme's game plan. 
Dododo Witch is a level 4 monster with 1200 attack and 1600 defense, and when normal or special summoned, you can special summon a Dododo monster from your hand in attack position or face down defense position, except another copy of itself. This is another great card to pair with Driver, as special summoning them with this effect means you can go into a rank 4, increase both their levels by 1 to go into a rank 5, or lower both their levels by 1 to make a rank 3. It can also special summon Dododo Bot in attack mode so you don't have to wait to attack with it, or get Warrior out so you can benefit from all all the attack power. They have a lot of applications, so they'll be very helpful whichever way you use them. Dododo Swordsman is a level 8 monster with 0 attack and 3000 defense, and while Swordsman is on the field after having been flip summoned, it gains 3500 attack, and when flipped face up by any means, you can target up to 2 face up monsters on the field and destroy them. This is why it's so important for Witch to be able to summon in face down defense position, because they can set up this ridiculous ticking time bomb. If your opponent has effect removal, then it's not much different from any other face down monster. But failing those options, your opponent either has to attack into the 3000 defense wall to only have to deal with the monster destruction, or will have to wait for you to flip up Swordmaster, get the pops, and become a humongous chungus. But I... Guess it was too much to make it a flip monster, huh? You know, why did Konami even bother printing monsters that have effects when they flip if they aren't going to make them flip monsters? Our last Dododo card is Dododo Draw. It's a normal spell that has you sending a Dododo monster from your hand or face up on the field to the grave to draw two cards. It's a destiny draw that's thankfully very helpful for setting up Driver. Throw it into the grave to search for more extenders and enablers, then get Buster Tribute summoned and you're off to the races. Like its counterpart Gagaga -ga -ga Draw, it's unfortunately not very good, as the number of printed Dododos is very small, to say nothing of the playable ones, but you need to find happiness in the small things sometimes. For instance, if these are all regular sized cards, then the Dododos are little gnome people! Ain't that precious? Next we have the Zubabas, a group of Earth Warrior monsters, and my research has led me to believe that this one is actually a combination of two onomatopoeias. All the previous themes have the same three characters in repetition, but from what I can tell, Zubaba is the combination of Zuzaza, a large swoosh sound like a hurricane, and Bababa, which is swift machinery at work like helicopter blades. So I feel like the combo is meant to evoke someone swinging weapons around very fast. First we have Zubaba Knight, a level 3 monster with 1600 attack and 900 defense. At the start of the damage step, if they attack a face-up defense position monster, you destroy it. Neat. I suppose this would have been pretty sweet with Go Go Go, Aristera, and Dexia's effect if it didn't already put the monster's defense stat to zero, but that just means it combos well with any other position change effect. You know, one of the most relevant types of effects across all levels of play. Okay, we are kind of scratching the bottom of the barrel here, but the next one's probably where things pick up. Zubaba Buster is a level 3 monster with 1800 attack and 600 defense, and if they inflict battle damage to your opponent at the end of the damage step, you have to destroy the face-up monster on the field with the lowest attack, your choice of tide, and if it does, Buster loses 800 attack. So it's a monster with fissure encoded onto it, but it doesn't limit the destruction to your opponent, meaning you can end up blowing up your own card, which gets more likely the more you do it since it loses attack whenever you trigger the effect. Okay, this is getting a bit out of hand, there's gotta be a good Zubaba out there somewhere. Zubaba General is a rank 4- RANK 4?! The other two are level 3s with no level modulation, what's going on here?! Uh, it's got 2,000 attack and 1,000 defense, uses any two level 4 monsters, still not over this, and once per turn you can detach a material to equip one warrior monster from your hand to general as an equipped card, and gains attack equal to the combined attack of all monsters equipped to them by that effect. That's... Kind of cool, actually. It's certainly more resource intensive than, say, Heroic Champion Excalibur, but that monster has a much shorter shelf life, whereas General's boost lasts as long as they're equipped. Though you will have to play pure warriors to make the most of it, since you can't just equip something like an Esol the same way Borlode Savage can. Now get back out there and train those troops, General. You need to get your subordinates into a shape where they can actually summon you. Thankfully, all is not lost, as we have a few cards that act as bridges between the themes. And the first one I want to talk about is the first legitimately playable Zubaba main deck monster, Zubaba Bancho Gagaga Coat. They're a level 4 Earth Warrior monster with 1800 attack and 100 defense, and if you control a Zubaba or Gagaga monster, aside from another copy of itself, you can special summon them from your hand. They can target a Gogogo -Go -Go or Dododo monster in your grave and special summon it, but you are locked out of special summoning any monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn, except Sees monsters. Now the first part of the name might seem like a bunch of gibberish, but again, if you've seen some JoJo, the visual design here might look familiar. That's because Boncho is a term that describes the leader of a gang of delinquents in a particularly Japanese style. 
The open jacket and distinctive hat are both big indicators, so if you've seen characters like Jotaro, Mondo Awada, either of the Boncho Digimon, or countless others, you can see how the weird Zubaba Boncho fusion name kinda works, especially along with the vague school theming of the Gaga Gas. As an actual monster, it's also pretty good. Its synergy with Zubabas is largely non-existent, but it's a free summon of a Gaga Ga for your Xyz plays, and can extend your plays by summoning out any Dododos or Gogogos you're splashing in. It doesn't even limit you that much because this restriction is much more lenient than previous Gagagas, especially since we're no longer reliant on links to make room for your Xyz. It's certainly the baddest Boncho on campus, but like any good leader, they look after their own. Unless you mess with the coat, then all bets are off. Dododo Dwarf Go 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 Glove is a level 4 Earth Rock monster with 0 attack and 1800 defense. During your main phase, they can special summon a Zubaba or Gagaga Ga Ga monster from your hand, and if you control a Go 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 or Dododo monster, except another copy of itself, you can special summon this card from your grave, but it's banished when it leaves the field, which should hopefully never happen because once you tuck them under an Xyz monster, they'll go right back to the grave so you can use their effect all over again. Dododo Dwarf Go 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 Glove is another excellent extender that helps you bridge the gaps between the different themes and was so good, in fact, that it actually saw play in Ad Emancipator, of all things, as a way to add more rock monster extenders. How cool is that? It also helps explain why all the Dododos are so tiny. They're dwarves! I can't wait to bring the rich, mythical history of the Dododos into my next D&D game. We've also got a normal trap, Guard Go, which triggers if any number of Gagaga, Ga, Go Go Go, or Dododo monsters you control are destroyed by battler card effect and sent to the grave. You target one of those monsters, special summon it, then you can special summon up to two Gagaga, Ga, Go Go Go, or Dododo monsters from your hand in defense position. So you've got a way to retaliate against your opponent by reviving a destroyed monster and summoning more from your hand, but there aren't many that can really take advantage of this. I guess some of the Go Go Go's can. Golem has that once per turn battle destruction immunity in defense position, and both Gigas and the Handy Hands have solid defense stats. But aside from that, you just gotta hope they can survive a battle phase, or that it triggered on your turn, for some reason. And like, where even is the guard part of all this? Like, I suppose throwing out monsters keeps your opponent away from your life points, but Gaga Ga Ga Guard does more to protect things than this. Konami, if you're going to print cards, I demand that they have the highest standard of ludonarrative resonance between the names and effects, especially with the theme made up of silly onomatopoeias. It's imperative to my immersion! Alright, now it's time for the crown jewel, the Onomat cards, the ones that tie everything together. And I've got to start with Utopic Onomatopoeia, which is a big reason why I had to bring the Onomat themes into the Utopia video. They're a light warrior monster with 1500 attack and defense, are always treated as a Zubaba, Gagaga, Ga, Go Go Go, and Dododo card, which makes it the second ever playable main deck Zubaba card. During your main phase, you can special summon up to one each of a Zubaba, Gagaga, Ga, Go Go Go, and or Dododo monster from your hand in defense position, but you're locked out of your extra deck except for Xyz monsters for the rest of the turn. Once again, another brilliant card that helps connect the themes, throwing a bunch of them onto the field at once for some huge blowout plays. And you can even run it in the pure versions of any of those themes, as even summoning just one out of your hand can be enough to get the ball rolling. It's a big reason to play this in paper and in Duel Links, even if your deck name is going to end up sounding like Zoo, ba ba ga 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 ga, do 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 said the go go said some in the go go. Onomatopoeia is a normal spell that has you sending a card in your hand to the grave to add up to two Zubaba, Gagaga, Ga, Go Go Go, or Dododo monsters from your deck to your hand, but not more than one of each particular archetype. Back in the day, you had to try really hard to string together the synergies of the themes. Like, if you squinted hard enough, Gagaga Ga Ga Magician was a great pair with any of them due to their modular level, but with the advent of Zubaba Bancho, Gagaga Ga Coat, and Dododo Dwarf, Go 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 Gloves, you can add both of them with this card, which makes connecting the themes that much easier easier and overall more powerful, and really helps when things go onomata pair shaped. Onomata Pickup is a continuous spell that, when activated, adds an Onomata card from your deck to your hand, except another copy of itself, which effectively makes it more copies of Onomata Para. Once per turn, you can target a Zubaba, Gagaga, Ga, Go Go Go, or Dododo monster you control, and all monsters you currently control become that monster's level until the end of the turn, even if Pickup leaves the field. Alright, now that's some powerful Xyz nonsense right there. Not only do you gain access to the power that is Onomata Para, you can also grab Utopic Onomata Pia if you're already set up, and if you land Gagaga Ga Ga Magician onto the board, then you've just modulated the level of your entire field, because after you use Magician's effect, you can use Pickup to make everyone copy it, no fuss, no money. Us. And that's just what strategies like Onomat need, a little pick-me-up. 
Our last card is Onomatopia, a field spell that gains a high five the sky counter each time a number of Utopia monsters are special summoned to your side of the field. All monsters you control gain 200 attack and defense for each high five the sky counter on it, and once per turn you can remove two high five the sky counters to special summon a Zubaba, Gagaga, -ga, Go 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 or Gododo monster from your deck. This'll be a bit more relevant when we talk about Utopia, but it's nice that you have another card that acts as a way to pump up your board if you decide to go wide. And if you decide to go full Yuma, this is another way to extend your Utopia plays. Removing two counters can get you Zubaba Bancho, Gagaga -ga -ga Coat, which can get you a monster out of your grave to make another Xyz monster, meaning that the sky is quite literally the limit. So that's all the Onomat cards, but what do we do with them? Well anything, I would imagine. With the breadth of cards you have access to, I imagine you can come up with a play sequence that would rival your wildest dreams. But since we're limited by linear time and finite dimensions, here's something funky you can do with Onomots. Open a hand with either Onomata Pickup or Para, and one of either Utopic Onomot or Dododo Dwarf. Get to Para and pitch the Utopic or Dwarf, and grab the opposite one, as well as Zubaba Boncho. Then normal summon the Utopic or Dwarf, and use their effect to summon the Boncho. Utopic is preferred, since you can potentially summon more than one monster, but it's not needed for this example. Then you use Boncho's effect to summon whichever monster you discarded, and now you have all three on the field. Use Boncho and Dwarf to make a rank 4, in this example we'll make Tornado Dragon to clear a pesky back row, or Castell to answer a difficult monster. Make sure to detach Dwarf, because since Utopic is a Dododo monster, you can special summon Dwarf back from the grave. At this point, you can use your remaining monsters to form Utopia Double, and if you've cleared all interaction by this point, you probably just won the game. Alternatively, you can do all that, but make another problem solver as your second Xyz monster, then overlay them into F-Zero Utopic Future, all the way up into Utopic Draco Future. I'm going to make the argument that, out of all the Yu-Gi-Oh! protagonists, Yuma is the most prevalent when it comes to competitive play. Yusaku is in close contention, especially with the recent dominance of Access Code Talker, as well as the early adoption of Decode Talker when Master Rule 4 rolled around. Links are very splashable by the nature of their materials, but for its time, you could not shake off a good rank 4 toolbox. And when it came to solving the unsolvable, Utopia was there to clean things up. The base form made for a great way to put a big body on board using two smaller monsters, and in later formats, could easily be ranked up into Utopia the Lightning to take care of otherwise insurmountable threats like Apocalypse Fort Towers and Cosmo Dark Destroyer. It's arguably still very playable now, as what made it good at handling these monsters makes it good at handling Dragoon, though most extra decks don't have the room or the main deck monsters to support it. And for further examples of their competitive impact, the recent banning of Utopic Zexel shows just how annoyingly powerful it was. So, with the rest of Yuma's more well-known monsters covered, let's go over the ones that put him on the map. We'll start with the Utopias proper, as well as the spells and traps they have for support, follow it up with their trusty Zexel weapons, then talk about the rest of the cards tied in with Utopia, most notably, the Zexel Servants. Get your philosophy textbooks ready and hope you have someplace cozy to watch all this, because it's time to bring you Utopia. The majority of these monsters are going to be rank 4 Light Warrior Xyz monsters, but there are a number of exceptions, so keep an ear out because I'll be bringing them up as they become relevant. And it's hard to start out without the original themselves, number 39, Utopia. They have 2500 attack and 2000 defense, and require any two level 4 monsters as material. When a monster declares an attack, you can detach a material from Utopia to negate the attack, and if it's ever targeted for an attack while it has no material, it's destroyed. A pretty unsettling drawback, but if you had to use the effect enough to prevent it from being destroyed in battle by a bigger monster, I guess you would have lost it eventually. But it's not restricted to only negating attacks it's involved in. If you have a weaker monster that's about to get run over, Utopia can fly in at the last second to save the day. And they're not just an accomplished warrior of hope, they're also a decorated baseball player. That's right, I wasn't going to miss an opportunity to talk about this. Uniform number 39, <laughs> Junior Baseball King Home, a parody of Utopia's OCG name, King of Wishes, Hope. Now, I'm not a Rush Duel channel yet, so I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of what it does, but I could not pass up a chance to cover a good reason why I should pay attention to Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s. In fact, they're not the only one. Yuka Goha, one 
one of the six Goha presidential siblings who act as the main antagonists of Sevens, wields a whole gallery of baseball-themed Yuma cards. There's uniform number 99, Junior Baseball King Dragon Home Groundra, a playoff of Utopic Dragon, but we've also got Achacha Catcher, Gagaga Outfielder, Zubaba Batter, Dododo Second, and Go 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 Umpire. I love that Sevens can take beloved cards like this and remix them in fun ways, but I'm not looking forward to the new product rush they're going to jumpstart. Yu-Gi-Oh! and baseball cards are already an endangered species by themselves, but combine them? The scalpers will have bought out every Rush Duel import before this video's even over! Now, the most prominent feature of Utopia is its many forms. The battle against evil presents myriad obstacles to overcome, and so hope must change and adapt with it, to carve a clear path out of the chaos of confusion and into the light. Thus, we harness Chaos Exceeds Evolution to summon number C-39, Utopia Ray. They have 2500 attack and 2000 defense, and require 3 level 4 light monsters as material. But alternatively, you can stack them on top of a number 39 Utopia you control as Exceeds material. You can detach a material from them to have Utopia Ray gain 500 attack, and one monster your opponent controls lose 1000 attack until the end phase. There's no once per turn requirement on here either, but you do have to be at or below 1000 life points to activate and resolve the effect. So if you're in a pinch, you can bring out Utopia Ray, detach 3 material, putting your monster at 4000 attack while shredding 3000 attack off of your opponent's field. It doesn't even target either, so there isn't much that's going to stand a chance against your final desperation attack. But I mean, who can blame them? Look at that sword they're wielding. C39 here is definitely a card-carrying member of the wielding a giant hunk of metal as a sword club. If we use Rank Up Magic Limited Baryon's Force, we get C39 Utopia Ray V. They're a Rank 5 monster with 2600 attack and 2000 defense, and require 3 level 5 monsters as material. When this card in its owner's possession is destroyed by an opponent's card, you can target an Xyz monster in your grave and return it to the extra deck. And if they have a Utopia monster as a material once per turn, you can detach a material, then target a monster your opponent controls, destroy it, and burn your opponent for its attack on the field. So it's a better Volcasaurus because it doesn't hinder your attacks in any way. You get rid of a big monster, take a huge chunk out of your opponent's life points, then swing in for 2600 more. A very thematic decision, considering that this Utopia is wielding two swords for two different waves of damage. That's some big Darth Maul energy right there. If we use Rank Up Magic Numeron Force, we get number C39, Utopia Ray Victory. They're a Rank 5 monster with 2800 attack and 2500 defense, and require 3 level 5 monsters as material. If they attack, your opponent can't activate any spell or trap cards until the end of the damage step. And if they have a Utopia monster as material, when Victory declares an attack on a face-up monster your opponent controls, you can detach a material to negate that monster's effects, and gain attack equal to the opponent's monster's attack until the end of the turn. So it's basically an Ancient Gear monster, and when summoned the right way, it's also got an honest and non-targeting effect veiler stapled onto it. It's another incredibly powerful finisher, and continues the sword evolution journey that we saw in Utopia proper. We went from Cool Sword, to Big Sword, to Double Ended Sword, and currently we're on the Four Swords part of this adventure. If we use Rank Down Magic Numeron Fall, we get number 39, Utopia Roots. They're a Rank 1 monster with 500 attack and 100 defense, requiring any two level 1 monsters monsters as material. And when any player's monster declares an attack, you can detach a material from Roots to negate the attack, and if you negated the attack of an Xyz monster, Roots permanently gains 500 attack times the rank of the monster whose attack you negated. This can be a funny tech choice against decks that make big Xyz monsters, as a rank 8 will easily get Roots up to 4500, but it's much more consistent as a way to supplement your own deck that runs big Xyz monsters. Sure, it's a little extra effort, but you may end up dealing a lot more damage if you have one monster bow out and let Roots take the stage, especially if it's not the first time you've done this. 4500 attack is pretty scary, but what about 8500? And if no Xyz are available to make the most of them, then it's just regular old Utopia minus the protein shakes. And honestly, it's nice to see that among the Barra ranks of the Utopia monsters, we've got a bit of good twink representation. If we use Rank Up Magic Astral Force, we get number 39, Utopia Beyond. They're a rank 6 monster with 3000 attack and 2500 defense, requiring any two level 6 monsters as material. If Xyz summoned, the attack of all monsters your opponent controls becomes zero, permanently. And once per turn, during either player's turn, you can detach a material, then target a face-up Xyz monster you control, and a Utopia monster in your grave. Then you banish the first target, summon the second one, then gain 1250 life points. That's a... 
weirdly specific number, I'm not sure why they kept it that way. In the anime, you just gain life points equal to half the attack of the monster you summon, which matches original Utopia, but I feel like you could have just kept the formula the same. I don't know. The important takeaway is that this is an OTK enabler, reducing your opponent's attack power to donuts and giving you another monster to swing in with. And since base Utopia can turn into a myriad of different forms, you can just summon it with Beyond if you have the Spare Seas monsters to spend on the effect, then turn it into whichever version wins you the game, meaning victory is never quite beyond your reach. We've also got two other Utopias that evolve from Shining Xyz Evolution. It's like Chaos Xyz Evolution, but more manga exclusive. Number S39, Utopia Prime, is a rank 4 monster with 2510 attack and 2000 defense, requiring any three level 4 light monsters as material. You can either use Teller Knights to summon this big bad blade battler, or you can just stack them on top of a number 39 Utopia you control, whichever's easier. If your opponent's life points are at least 3000 more than yours, you can detach three material from them and pay life points until you only have 10 left, can you tell this is a manga card yet? And on resolution, you destroy as many special summon monsters your opponent controls as possible, and if you do, they're banished, then burn your opponent for 300 for each monster banished this way. And I thought Utopia Ray was a desperation play, this is some downright scorched earth campaign stuff right here. A stiff breeze can blow you over after activating this effect, and since you pay the life points as cost, you better hope your opponent doesn't have negation ready to stop you. But if it resolves properly, you've likely cleared your opponent's entire board, done a bit of burn, and can now swing in with 2510 damage, which is so funny to me. But I feel like they should have gone even farther. The original manga version has 2501 attack, and to activate the effect, you have to pay down to one life point. Way to take Yami Merrick's Thunder, Yuma. Very stylish. Number S39, Utopia the Lightning, is a rank 5 monster with 2500 attack and 2000 defense, requiring any 3 level 5 monsters as material, though they can be summoned on top of any rank 4 Utopia monster as well. Lightning itself can't be used as Xyz material, and if they battle, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects until the end of the damage step. And once per chain during damage calculation, if they battle an opponent's monster while Lightning has a Utopia monster as material, you can detach two material from Lightning to make their attack 5,000 for that damage calculation only. This card was a godsend to decks that needed to deal with big monsters that had unreasonable protection, the poster child of which was Cosmo Dark Destroyer. Being a 3,000 attack untargetable monster was more than most decks could feasibly deal with, but now, any deck with rank 4 access can spend 2 extra deck slots, or 3 if you wanted to be cheeky and summon Utopia Ray along the way to get an extra activation, to flex into Lightning, run into Dark Destroyer, and gain the extra benefit of cutting off their floating effect because Lightning is an Armades. It hasn't seen any play recently, despite the uptick in similar threats like Dragoon, but that's likely due to a lot of changes in how we build our decks nowadays. But if your favorite deck is capable of it, I'd highly recommend it, as you can use Lightning to really shock your opponent. Utopia Rising is a rank 4 Light Warrior Xyz monster with 0 attack and 2000 defense, requiring 2 level 4 monsters as material. If special summoned, you can target and special summon a number Xyz monster in your grave, except another Rising, and special summon and special summon it in defense, then you can attach all of Rising's material to that new monster. And if you Xyz summon, you can special summon Rising from your grave, but banish it when it leaves the field. So on its initial summon, you can grab any number from your grave and give it a fresh set of material to use its effects again, ranking up the leftover Rising rising into something like a Droll Driver Vespinado. And on subsequent turns, if you Xyz summon, Rising comes back and brings a number with it. Now, you can't summon Utopic Future with them because it can't use number monsters as material like a coward, but it is two free material that you can individually rank up or just fold into a Link monster. I hear Verte Anaconda dodged the ban list, so if your Xyz deck needs a bit of a bump, this Utopia will really help you rise to the occasion. Number S0, Utopic Zexel, has question mark attack and defense, and requires three number Xyz monsters with the same rank as material, but their original rank is always treated as one. However, you can also Xyz summon them on top of any Utopia Xyz monster you control by discarding a rank up magic normal spell. Their Xyz summon cannot be negated, and when Xyz summoned, your opponent's cards and effects can't be activated, so no flipping torrential tribute in response. They gain a thousand attack and defense for each material they have, and once per turn during your opponent's turn as a quick effect, you can detach a material to make it so your opponent cannot activate cards or effects that turn. 
Of all the most annoying cards to be printed, Utopic Zexal certainly rests near the top of the list, if not at the number one spot. While rather easy to summon in dedicated Utopia builds, it didn't quite hit its stride until the Numeron Gate cards became available. All of a sudden, you had a game plan that could OTK versus an underdeveloped board going second, and if they were made to go first, you could turn those gates into Utopic Zexal, all but blanking your opponent's first turn, unless Infinite Impermanence or a similar card was among their first six. But there was nothing stopping the Zexal player from having protection to stop that negation. While counterplay did still exist in the long run, this combo was consistent and grading enough to earn a spot on the Forbidden list. And honestly, good riddance. Yuma's cards are meant to exude hype and excitement, but this just slows everything down to a painful crawl. This card is the physical embodiment of someone giving you a hearty good luck, have fun when starting a duel before revealing they brought Nurse Burn to locals. Absolutely disgusting. Speaking of utopias that need number monsters as material, let's take a look at number 93, Utopia Kaiser. They're a rank 12 monster with 2500 attack and 2000 defense, and requires two or more number exceeds monsters with the same rank that have material as material. Once per turn, they can special summon any number of rank 9 or lower number monsters with 3000 or less attack that have different ranks from each other right out of the extra deck, up to the number of differently named materials that Kaiser has, but their effects are negated, then you detach a material from Kaiser. And for the rest of the turn, unless the effect was negated, you can't special summon, and any battle damage your opponent takes is halved. Also, while you control another number exceeds monster, Kaiser can't be destroyed by battle or card effect. This card first saw the light of day as a YCS prize card and is one of the most ridiculous build arounds I've ever seen. Since you're negating the effect of what you've summoned and you can't summon any more once you use the effect, you're looking to accumulate 16,000 attack or more, since all your battle damage is halved. This means you'll need to A, have a diverse enough extra deck to facilitate this, and B, get enough material under Kaiser to make the effect worthwhile. Utopia Double is capable of summoning this card off of any two level 4 monsters, but you'll only have two material which means two summons max. And if you use the strongest monster of any given rank, you'll need all five to reach the minimum OTK threshold. Or alternatively, you could play a lot more stun to run out the turns. You don't lose those monsters during the end phase, so if you do a sizable chunk of damage on the initial turn, you may be able to sweep things up when you do full damage next turn. You can even summon monsters that you plan to rank up later on once your summon restriction has run out for more long-term benefits. There's a lot of layers to Kaiser that innovative duelists can sink their teeth into, especially now that you can summon Kaiser to the extra monster zone for more room, so there's a lot of opportunities to surprise your opponent. Now we have monsters that require the opposite material, Utopias that need non-number monsters as material. Number F0, Utopic Future, has zero attack and defense, and requires two Xyz monsters with the same rank except number monsters, and their original rank is always treated as one. They can't be destroyed by a battle, and neither player takes any battle damage from attacks involving Utopic Future. At the end of the damage step, if Future battled an opponent's monster, you can take control of it until the end of the battle phase. Also, if Future would be destroyed by a card effect while face up on the field, you can detach a material from them instead. This card is absolutely nutty, and I have a lot of fond memories of stacking two Dante on top of each other to make this card. You can turn your opponent's most powerful monster against them, and while you only have it for that battle phase, it can still be wildly destructive. It can help bolster your offensive push, while also making way for your other monsters to attack as well. And because of its many resistances, it's incredibly durable. And if your opponent doesn't give you any monsters to take, then make sure to summon future using Gaga Gaga Magician to turn them into an obelisk for the turn. There aren't a lot of better ways to get those F-Zeros in chat. They've also got a special attack counterpart, Number F0, Utopic Future Slash. They have all the same stats and summoning requirements as Utopic Future, but you can also stack them on top of any Utopia or Number F0 Utopic Future you control. This version gains 500 attack for each number monster in the graves, cannot be destroyed by battle, and once per turn, they can detach a material to allow them a second attack during each battle phase that turn. Note that this lacks the On Monsters clause, so Future Slash can potentially swing in directly twice for huge damage, but you do need to be on an extensive number lineup to make this threatening. The upside is that you can just utilize original Utopic Future as long as you want, and once there's a critical number of, well, numbers in the grave, you can upgrade them to Slash to close things out with a big falcon punch. 
or instead of Slash, you can turn the original into Number F0 Utopic Draco Future. They have 3000 attack and 2000 defense, and requires 3 Xyz monsters with the same rank except number monsters, but their original rank is treated as 1, and is always treated as a Utopic Future card. You can also summon them by stacking them on top of the original Number F0 Utopic Future. This outstanding specimen can't be destroyed by battle or card effect, and once per turn when your opponent activates a monster effect, as a quick effect, you can detach a material from Draco to negate the activation, then if the effect came from a monster on the field, you gain permanent control over it. This is like a tiny dragoon and I love it. It doesn't gain attack and it can't negate spells and traps, and sadly it can be targeted so it doesn't have the same kind of immovable object presence, but it can't lose out in battle, and has the capability to steal what you negate, adding to your forces and making it a rather stubborn boss for your opponent to get Drake over. But these aren't the only utopic monsters, we've got number 99, Utopic Dragon. They're a rank 10 Dragon Xyz monster with 4000 attack and 2000 defense, requiring 3 level 10 monsters as material. But you can also stack them on top of a Utopia monster you control by discarding a rank up magic normal spell card. Once per turn, they can target a number monster in your grave and special summon it in defense position, but its effects are negated. And during either player's turn, when a monster effect is activated that targets Utopic Dragon, you can detach a material to negate the activation and destroy that card. This is a pretty wild way to get a lot of damage on board, and as long as they stay on the field, they can keep putting up the pressure. The revival effect does not require you to detach a material, so until they're disposed of, you get free numbers from your grave. And while the protection effect is limited to monsters, those do make up quite a bit of the threats in the game. Now, the best way to end the game with them is by comboing with Rank Up Magic Argent Chaos Force. You discard it to turn a Utopia into a Utopic Dragon, and because of their once per duel effect, Argent Chaos Force comes back to your hand after you summon the Dragon. Then all you have to do is summon a Utopia from the grave with the Dragon, hopefully set up by detaching one or more of them from a previous Utopia after some evolutions, then discard the Argent Chaos Force one more time to get another Dragon, and at this point you've got 8000 points of damage on board. It's a bit gimmicky, but when it goes off, it's a real home run. Ugh, no, wait, this is supposed to go into the Rush Duel section. A note to Future Nova, make sure to move this joke earlier in the video so it's actually funny. And they're not the only number 99, because we've also got Utopia Dragner. A rank 12 Xyz monster with 3000 attack and defense, requiring 3 or more level 12 monsters as material. As a quick effect, you can detach 2 material to special summon any number monster from your extra deck, whose number is between 1 and 100, and it is treated as a proper Xyz summon. When you do this, you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck the turn you activate this effect, except Xyz monsters, and only Dragner can attack directly. And note that this counts before you activate this effect as well. And when your opponent's monster declares an attack, you can change that monster's attack to zero forever. So you're definitely going to want to summon this with the new Hyper Rank Up Magic Hope Force spell, because getting together 3 level 12s is going to be a bit of an issue. You'll also want to figure out which number monster you want to build around with this card, because Dragner honestly does little else. Thankfully, you have a great option in number 100 Numeron Dragon. The Hyper Rank Up Magic will give it just the material it needs to bolster its attack to 13,000 when it stands next to Dragner, and while only Dragner can attack directly, this does mean any attack position monster with 5,000 or less attack is fair for Numeron to end the game with, so no one can accuse them of dragging the game out. We've also got one that shows up in the Arc V manga of all places, number double X Utopic Dark Infinity. They're a rank 10 Dark Xyz monster with 4000 attack and defense, requiring two or more level 10 monsters as material. When any monster is destroyed by battle and sent to the grave, they can detach a material to target that monster and special summon it to your field in defense position. They can also target one other face up special summoned monster you control, I wonder where that will come from, and gain life points equal to its original attack. So it's a giant Goyo Guardian with a hint of Cyber Angel Natasha. It's a lot easier to summon now thanks to the newly released Hyper Rank Up Magic Hope Force, and 4k stats is nothing to sneeze at, but it's otherwise surprisingly bland. Probably should have leaned more into the double X Saber theming. We've talked a lot about the evolutions of Utopia, but what about a card that acts as a kind of pre-evolution? That's where number 39 Utopia Double comes in. They're a rank 4 Xyz monster with 0 attack and 2500 defense, requiring any two level 4 monsters as material. As a quick effect, they can detach a material to add the spell card double or nothing from your deck to your hand, then Xyz summon a Utopia Xyz monster from your extra deck, except another copy of itself, by using double as material. And if you do, that monster's attack is doubled, but it can't attack directly, and this does count as an Xyz summon. 
Our best targets will come out as 5,000, but the best one is going to be Utopia proper because of Double or Nothing. It's a quick play spell that can only be activated when a monster's attack has been negated. You target that monster, grant it a second attack during that battle phase, and its attack is doubled during the damage step. This means you can swing in with a 5,000 attack Utopia, use its effect to negate its own attack, activate Double or Nothing, then swing in again with 10,000 attack points. So if your opponent has a monster with 2,000 or less attack, you just put lethal damage on board. It's certainly enough to make even the most seasoned duelist do a double take. But what if your opponent has discovered the power of Utopia and is looking to harness it for themselves? Then you can make them regret that decision by using number 98 Anti-Topian. They're a dark rank 4 Xyz monster with 2000 attack and 2500 defense, requiring any two level 4 monsters as material. When any player's monster declares an attack, you can detach a material from them to change that monster to defense position. So it's kinda like attack negation. Also, during either player's turn, when Antitopian is in the grave, they can target a Utopia monster on either side of the field. Antitopian is special summoned from your grave in defense position, then attach that Utopia to Antitopian as Xyz material. Admittedly, it's very situational, relying on specific metagames to take advantage of for full effect. But if you're worried your opponent is about to lightning you, or stack up with a bunch of Zexal weapons, you can dash those hopes with a single card. Speaking of which, we've got two more Utopia Xyz monsters left to talk about, but they're closely tied with these Zexal weapons, so we're gonna hold off on talking about them until we've covered the kinds of cards they work with. For now, let's pivot to some more generic Utopia support, and we'll start with Utopic Astral Hope. They're a level 4 light warrior monster with zero attack and defense, and if an Xyz monster is on the field, you can special summon them from your hand. They can send any other card from your hand or field to the grave to add an Xyz, Onomat, Zexal, or Number Spell or Trap from your deck to your hand. Would have been cool to see it grab Rank Up Magics too, but there is a Zexal one, as well as a whole swath of new Zexal cards that are outstanding. It also gives us access to the incredible Onomat cards we talked about last episode while putting a level 4 body on board. Numbers also got a new counter trap to help them keep their boards safe, and I could spend a whole other video just talking about the Xyz spells and traps. Astral Hope is a great card for fixing your hand, and my only regret is that they can't bring along their little friend Astral Karibo. Sorry, but I already did a video on them, and technically, they're number support, not Utopia support. Hey, I don't make the rules, I just make them. Now it's time for some spells, and since the rank up magics play such a big role in many of our Utopias, at least in the anime, let's go over some that are relevant to their summoning. Rank up magic limited Baryon's force is a normal spell that targets a rank 4 Xyz monster you control, and Xyz summons a number C monster that's one rank higher than that monster on top of it. Or you can try regular ol' Rank Up Magic Baryon's Force, which lets you do that for an Xyz monster of any rank, and can even summon C Xyz monsters as well, and can steal a material from an opponent's monster, but the monster type of the Xyz you want to go into has to match the base form. And if you want to do some battle phase shenanigans, you can try Rank Up Magic Quick Chaos. It's a quick play spell, but only works on number monsters to rank them up into their specific number C version. But this means you can do some El Shadal fusion level plays, attacking with Utopia, then turning it into Ray Victory for some big beats. I know the power of Baryon is largely opposed to the astral cards we play, but sometimes you just gotta use what you've got when wrapped up in the chaos of combat. Rank Up Magic Numeron Force is a normal spell that works like Baryon's Force, though you can't get CXC's monsters. Then, once you summon your new monster, if there are any face-up cards on the field other than Numeron Force and the monster you summoned, you negate the effect of all those other face-up cards permanently. This means you can turn off just any kind of floodgate, or just anything annoying you don't want to deal with. Though, be careful, as it doesn't know how to distinguish between friend and foe, and can easily negate your cards as well. Though if you pay attention to your sequencing and stay numeron on the ball, it won't be a problem. Rank Down Magic Numeron Fall is a normal spell that targets a Utopia monster, and Xyz summons any Utopia with a lower rank on top of it. And the monster summoned with this effect gains a new one, where if it battles an opponent's monster, that opponent's monster's effects are negated during the battle phase only. This is largely how you're going to access Utopia Roots, but if you don't have a setup to make the most of them, you can just turn them into any of your lower ranked ones. Say up Ray V that's already used its Destroy and Burn effect into any number of rank 4 Utopias, while also granting them a pretty sweet way to strip your opponent's monsters of any protections. Any monster that can't be destroyed by a battle will now fall under the might of this card. 
Rank Up Magic Astral Force is a normal spell that targets an Xyz monster you control with the highest rank, your choice of Tide, and Xyz summons an Xyz monster on top of it that's two ranks higher and has the same type and attribute. Also, during your draw phase, instead of drawing your normal card for a turn, you can add Astral Force from your grave to your hand, but you cannot perform any special summons that turn except through the effect of Astral Force. One of these days, Astral Force is going to be responsible for some pretty busted lines of play, skipping across themes, granting effects that shouldn't be possible, but as of yet, that hasn't happened. There was a brief time where you could play it in Burning Abyss to turn Dante into Pleiades for some admittedly sweet bouncing, but that fell out of favor pretty quickly. So now, it's just a really good way to make Utopia Beyond, but one day, they're gonna make a busted, rank 12 Earth Machine monster that can slot into trains, and then you'll all be sorry. Rank Up Magic Zexal Force is a normal spell that was just released in Lightning Overdrive. It targets any Xyz monster you control, then Xyz summons a Utopia or ZW monster that's one rank higher than it from your extra deck. And if you do, take a ZW or ZS monster from your main deck and place it on top of your deck. And if your opponent's life points are at least 2,000 higher than yours, you can banish Zexal Force from your grave to draw a card, hopefully the one you set up on top of your deck. What I like about this Rank Up Magic is that it cuts out the need for base Utopia if you're looking to use more modern cards. You can instead pull from the rank 4 toolbox, then use Zexal Force to put the combo right on track. And with a card like Utopic Change Tactics, you can either draw the card by paying that 500 life points, or have paid enough life points using that continuous spell to create that 2000 point difference. This card largely replaces the Baryon Force cards, because all of these neat effects are a pretty good draw. The last one I want to touch on is Hyper Rank Up Magic Hope Force. It's a normal spell that has you targeting a rank 9 or lower Utopia Xyz monster you control, and Xyz summoning any rank 10 or higher Utopia or Utopic monster on top of it. Also, if a rank 10 or higher Utopia or Utopic Xyz monster special summons another Xyz monster with their effect, while Hope Force is in the grave, you can attach Hope Force to that new monster as Xyz material so it can actually use its effect. Now, this is generally meant to work with whatever you summon with Utopia Dragner, but can also work when summoning a number out of your grave with Utopic Dragon or one of the monsters summoned by Utopia Kaiser. I mean, their effects are all negated, so there isn't much of a point, but it can do it. So with the help of this card, any number monster you bring to bear will be a force to be reckoned with. Now, with all these rank up magics, you can end up summoning a lot of utopias in a single turn. So why not take advantage of all that evolution with Xyz Change Tactics? It's a continuous spell that has an effect that triggers whenever you Xyz summon a utopia monster to your field. You pay 500 life points and draw a card. The issue with using rank up magics is kind of the same as using fusion spells. You lose that spell, which inherently makes it a minus one. Change Tactics can mitigate this, especially since, while you can only control one, there's no hard once per turn on it. And if you summon out Utopia Ray, Prime, or Lightning with their built-in effect without using a card, then you just got a plus one. You can even search this card off of Utopic Astral Hope or Generation Force, so you can grab it early and resolve it often. And while losing all those life points might be scary, with all the cards that want you to have lower life than your opponent, it's a pretty solid... tactic. Another spell that benefits you for having lower life is Zexal in Trust. It's a normal spell that targets a Utopia, ZW, or ZS monster in your grave, and either special summons it or adds it to your hand, whichever you'd like. And if your opponent's life points are at least 2,000 higher than yours, except the turn in trust was sent to the grave, you can banish in trust from your grave to target a Zexal Speller trap in your grave, except another copy of itself, and add it to your hand. So we've got a card that can get back our heaviest hitters and best extenders, with the potential to get back another card later in the duel. We've already seen one such card in the form of Zexal Force, but there's also a ton of other Zexal cards that can search your entire theme, set up future plays, or initiate one of the most powerful reversals in the game. Trust me, it's pretty powerful. Utopia Buster is a normal spell you can activate if you control a Utopia monster. It destroys your opponent's monster with the lowest attack, your choice of Tide, and if you do, burn your opponent for damage equal to that monster's attack on the field. This card is deceptively strong, as it has no restriction to keep you from using it after the battle phase. If your opponent has a small monster and a big monster, you can just run over the small one for big battle damage, then bust the big monster with Buster for even more damage. But I gotta ask, where did Utopia get a rocket launcher from? That seems wildly out of style. Reverse Breaker is an equip spell you can only equip to a Utopia monster. When the equipped monster declares an attack, you can target a spell or trap your opponent controls and destroy it, and your opponent cannot activate spells or traps in response to this effect's activation. Alright, looks like we're showing up Amazon as Sage once again. Not only does it trigger before the battle happens, it locks out all of your opponent's back row responses too. It also has the upside of keeping you safe from battle traps like Mirror Force, since the 
effect triggers on attack declaration, which then becomes unrespondable. But I'm starting to think Utopia doesn't know how to use anything but swords. He's not even in the art for this one. Okay, this should be a bit more their speed. Rising Sun Slash is an equip spell that you can only equip to a Utopia monster, and the equipped monster cannot be destroyed by card effects. Each time an attack is negated, you place a Rising Sun counter on this equipped card, and the equipped monster gains 500 attack for each Rising Sun counter on Rising Sun Slash. And if the equipped monster would detach a material to activate its effect while you control it, you can treat Rising Sun Slash as one of its material. Right off the bat, the effect destruction immunity is really cool, especially because it negates the base form's own drawback, and giving you a tiny boost for using the negate attack ability means it can climb potentially up to 3500, which is pretty sweet. Despite all that, it's still not enough to see widespread play, but with effects like that, it's got a bright future ahead of it. And speaking of negating attacks, Lightwing Shield is a continuous spell that's another signature move of Utopia. You can activate it when a monster's attack is negated, and either advance the turn to the end phase immediately, or target a Utopia Xyz monster you control, and its attack becomes double its original attack until the end of the turn. You can also banish it from your grave in place of a material from a Utopia Xyz monster you control to activate its effect. I gotta admit, Having a card that can end the turn is pretty funny, and the fact that it can also be used defensively, negating another monster's attack to set Utopia to 5,000, or whatever's double the form you have available, makes it useful in a ton of different scenarios, so it's certainly not light on versatility. Shining Hope Road is a normal spell that you can activate by targeting three monsters in your grave. You special summon all of them, but their effects are negated, then immediately after that effect resolves, you exceed summon a Utopia or Utopic monster using only those three monsters, and you can't special summon other monsters the turn you activate this card before or after. Looking at our pool of Utopia monsters, having to use three material actually cuts out a lot of options. Utopia Kaiser seems like a great avenue, but the monsters you use as material have to have their own material, so that doesn't pan out. It can summon Dragner, but you'd need three level 12s in Grave, which I'm gonna put down as unlikely. Same with level 10s for Utopic Dragon. And while this would have been fantastic in making Utopic Zexel, well, we've already gone over why that's not happening. This means you can only use this to make Utopia the Lightning and the Utopia Ray series, which, like, are you really going to be running that many level 5s to pull this off? And Utopia Prime. Maybe sometime down the line we'll get a more powerful payoff for a card like this, but until then, we're going to be taking the road more traveled. Thank you very much. Alright, you want to see some anime stuff? Check out Shining Draw. It's a normal spell you have to reveal when you draw it for your normal draw if you want to activate it, and keep it revealed until main phase 1. During that same main phase 1, you can target a Utopia Ixyz monster you control, and either equip it with any number of ZW monsters with different names from your deck and extra deck, or Ixyz summon any Utopia Ixyz monster with a different name onto that target. Thankfully, it doesn't apply any restrictions on how you can play that turn, so you can use this to supplement your usual plays. If you desperately need access to a certain Utopia, it's got you covered, but what I I'm most enticed by is the promise of a fully loaded Utopia with all the weapons. They've got some pretty spiffy effects you can gain access to that'll really help Utopia shine. Now, with cards like this, you're encouraged to play things that can stack it on top of your deck so you can make the card live. And thankfully, the theme comes with a way to do just that. Introducing Zexel Field, a field spell that prevents your opponent from responding to any of your cards or effects that target your Xyz monsters. This is meant to cover your rank up magic spells, but if you have any buff effects that target, those will be protected too. If any number of Xyz monsters are special summoned to your field, you can target one of them and attach any Xyz monster from your extra deck or grave to that monster as material. This is extraordinary, not only for the fact that it can bolster the material of Utopia Kaiser for more summons, but also allows you to skip right to powerful Chaos Xyz monsters, who normally only get their best effects when ranked up from their base form. But with Zexel Field, any effect that can summon the advanced forms can now be supplemented by just giving them their base form as material. But the most striking effect is, during your draw phase before you draw, you can stack a Shining Draw on top of your deck. Yeah, just choose whenever you want to unleash the full power of Zexel 3, it's incredibly wild. It's general rank up protection, and can either bolster your usual Utopia plays, or help out any Chaos Xyz or Chaos Number deck you want to play. So no matter what side of the Baryan Astral Conflict you find yourself on, this card will be a huge help in taking the field. Future Drive is a quick play spell that has you targeting a utopic future monster you control and applying the following effects for the rest of the turn. It can attack all monsters your opponent controls once each. If it battles an opponent's monster, their effects are negated during the damage step only. And each time it destroys a monster by battle, you burn your opponent for damage equal to the destroyed monster's original attack. This is an excellent one-two punch when combined with Gaga Gaga Magician. 
Using its effect, you can make F-Zero a 4,000 attack powerhouse that can now deal battle damage, and since it only negates its own effect, the bonuses from Future Drive will be unaffected. So your opponent only needs to have two attack position monsters for you to swing in for lethal damage, since F-Zero is now basically a flame wingman. And even if you attack defense position monsters, you're still going to be burning your opponent for their attack value. It's the culmination of all the power Utopia has wielded thus far, making F-Zero the perfect formula for victory. Now it's time for the trap cards. Utopian Aura is a normal trap that has you detaching an Xyz material from an Xyz monster you control, and makes it so all the face-up Xyz monsters you currently control can't be destroyed by card effects until the end phase. Not technically a Utopia-specific card, but it's in the art and it's kind of in the spirit of things, letting you use a material to protect from effect destruction rather than battle destruction. Just make sure you don't play two at once, because then that would be an Aura Aura, and we've already covered all the onomatopoeias. Release Reverse Burst is a normal trap that has attributing a Utopia monster you control to destroy all set spells and traps your opponent controls. So yeah, a really weird Harpy's Feather Duster that has a cost that can be kinda easy to fulfill if you're reviving Utopias for free with the effective Utopic Dragon. Not highly recommended, especially because looking at the art makes my head spin. Like there's these dark magic circle looking things, Utopia's nowhere to be seen, what's going on here? Well, I looked it up, and release is the OCG term for tributing, which covers this card's cost. Note, in the anime, you can tribute any Xyz monster, so that's why Baby Tyragon is here. Reverse is the OCG term for face-down cards. And the burst part is, well, about destroying those cards. Glad I looked into that, because I was about to release reverse burst into tears of frustration. Halfway to Forever is a normal trap that targets two monsters in your grave and special summons them, but their effects are negated if they have any, and if you do, immediately after the effect resolves, you Xyz summon a light attribute Utopia or Utopic Xyz monster using only those two material. This works similarly to Shining Hope Road, but now you can access any of your two material Utopia. And it spells speed too, so you can drop a regular Utopia on your opponent's turn to block some attacks while setting up for future plays, making it a rather key card. And while you have that key, you might as well use it to open the Door of Destiny. It's a continuous spell that you can activate when an opponent's monster declares a direct attack. That attack is negated, then you special summon the Door of Destiny as a level 1 light fiend effect monster with zero attack and defense. During your standby phase, while this card is treated as a monster, you can banish any number of Utopia monsters with different names from your grave to burn your opponent for 500 damage per Utopia banished. Then the door gains attack equal to the damage dealt. As a last line of defense, it's not that bad. It can stop a lethal attack, then turn the tables on your opponent by counterpunching them while making a big monster. It's also thematically appropriate, as it gains a pretty cool power, but you have to give up something in return. And if you're deep enough on Utopias to make this effect worth it, then yeah, you're giving up something pretty important. But hey, if it ends the duel quick enough, you won't have to worry about the repercussions of making a pact with a demonic looking entity. Just make sure the door literally hits your opponent on the way out. And once you've opened the door, then you'll have sealed the Contract of Destiny. It's another continuous trap, and each time any number of cards are destroyed by battle or card effect, you can place an Emperor's Key counter on this card, maximum one. If your opponent special summons any number of monsters from the extra deck, except during the damage step, you can remove an Emperor's Key counter from this card as cost, and on resolution, you send a Door of Destiny from your hand, deck, or face-up field to the grave, and if you do, special summon a Light Attribute Utopia or Utopic Xyz monster from your extra deck, and if you do, attach Contract of Destiny to that monster as Xyz material, and this counts as a legit Xyz summon. It is a lot of hoops to jump through, but this does just summon anything out of your usual arsenal. Most of them don't have anything they can do on your opponent's turn aside from the base form, sure, but this can just make F-Zero if you need a physical wall that can take things, or Utopic Draco Future if you need a physical wall that can negate things. Alternatively, if you have Zexel Field up, you can make Utopia Dragner, then gain a second material from your field spell. Then next turn, once Zexel Field's Xyz material effect is back online, you can use Dragner to summon another monster, which opens up a number of opportunities. Zexel Alliance is a normal trap that you can activate when one of your face-up Xyz monsters are destroyed by battle or your opponent's card effect. You pay life points so you only have 10 left, that sounds familiar, and on resolution, you special summon any Utopia monster from your grave, and if you do, take one card from your deck and place it on top of your deck. That special summoned monster's attack becomes doubled, and it can't be destroyed by battle, except by battle with a number monster very flavorful to the anime, nor by card effect. 
Zex. So when you absolutely, positively need to end the game right this instant, Zexal Alliance is in your corner. You'll likely have, at minimum, a 5,000 attack monster with battle and effect destruction immunity, and the card you stack on top of your deck can be yours if you have Zexal Force in your grave to get the draw. And that's if you activate it during your turn. Otherwise, you'll just draw it as your normal draw, and it can be anything you want to help grab victory from the Jaws of Defeat. It's super risky, but it's the number one way to win. Or, I guess, number 10, since we aren't in the manga. Now it's time to talk about Utopia's arsenal. While they lean on Xyz Evolution to help tackle whatever obstacles come their way, sometimes that doesn't cut it, and you just need to grab some horse armor to help you out, which is where the Zexal weapons come in, usually shortened to ZW. They come in all shapes and sizes, but the traits they all share are that you can only control one of them, and they're all monsters that equip. They're not Union monsters, because why would they use the mechanic they already established to handle this, but they equip all the same, and have various ways that they equip, as well as the kinds of of utopias they can equip too. Let's start with the ones you can equip from your hand or field to any Utopia. Ashura Strike is a level 4 Fire Fairy monster with 1000 attack and defense, granting the equipped monster 1000 attack, and the equipped monster can attack all monsters your opponent controls once each. This makes for a fine addition to any Utopia, but I'm a big fan of slapping it on Utopia Ray Victory, as their Honest-like effect also keeps the attack bonus until the end of the turn, so you can run into your opponent's biggest monster, take their attack while dealing a sweet 3800 points of damage, then swing at a smaller monster for well over 4,000. I love this card, and it's an excellent company, as it can join Bujente Susanoo in the Deities That Punch Everything Club. Lightning Blade is a level 4 light beast monster with 1,200 attack and 2,000 defense, and the equipped monster gains 1,200 attack. While equipped to a monster, face-up ZW cards you control cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects, and if the equipped monster would be destroyed by a card effect, you can destroy Lightning Blade instead. This tough tiger is essential for any build looking to capitalize on the ZWs, as it keeps them safe from back row removal like Heavy Storm Duster, as well as keeping your Utopia safe from an effect that would sink it and all the ZWs you invested into them. It covers a lot of the theme's inherent weaknesses, which makes them the perfect companion. Slepner Male is a level 4 light beast monster with 1000 attack and defense, granting the equipped monster 1000 attack. If Slepner Male is sent to the grave because the equipped monster was destroyed by an opponent's card, you can target any Utopia monster in your grave and special summon it. So you get a redo on your boss monster if your opponent gets through your defenses, but unless you have the help of something like Zexal Field to give him material, you'll need a follow-up plan to make sure you can use him. It would have been really cool if it noble armsed all the ZW cards back onto the new Utopia as well, but it's already given us a nice effect, and I shouldn't really look a gift slept near in the mouth. Sylphid Wing is a level 4 light beast monster with 800 attack and 1600 defense, granting the equipped monster 800 attack. Once per turn, if your opponent special summons any number of monsters by an activated effect, you can have the equipped monster gain an additional 1600 attack. And if the equipped monster would activate an effect by detaching materials, you can send Sylphid Wing to the grave instead of one of those materials. The attack boost isn't super situational, like who isn't special summoning these days, and gaining an additional 2400 attack isn't anything to turn your nose up at, especially since that boost doesn't go away during the end phase. However, we already have a lot of Zexal weapons that boost attack, and eventually you run into a point where more attack isn't really helping you, and the ability to act as an Xyz material isn't really compelling enough for us to take this card under our wing. Tornado Bringer is a level 5 Wind Dragon monster with 1300 attack and 1800 defense, granting the equipped monster 1300 attack. While equipped to a monster, your opponent can't target it with card effects, and if it would be destroyed by battle, you can destroy Tornado Bringer instead. This is almost as important as Lightning Blade. Tornado Bringer helps to keep harmful effects away from Utopia, whether it be targeted removal or effect negation, and paired with Lightning Blade's protection, that's not going away anytime soon. If you plan on running a Utopia deck, then this card is going to be right up your Tornado Alley. Now we've got a couple that can only equip to a Utopia while they're on the field. Eagle Claw is a level 5 Wind Winged Beast monster with 2000 attack and 1200 defense, granting the equipped monster 2000 attack. If your opponent has at least 2,000 more life points than you, you can special summon Eagle from your hand, and once per turn, while equipped to a monster, when a trap card or trap effect that was activated on your opponent's side of the field resolves, you can negate the effects of that card. So hey, it stops Mirror Forces, Ice Dragon's Prisons, it can even stop Counter Traps. Normally, you can't respond to those with anything except other Counter Traps, but Eagle Claw's negation doesn't go on the chain. Note the lack of colon that denotes an activated effect. Rather, it just applies whenever it's appropriate. So if your opponent attempts to solemn anything, Eagle Claw can just say no, and you're good to go. And really, 
Isn't that the most American of effects? Having an eagle with an unhealthy disregard for other people's autonomy, doing things that, by all natural laws, they shouldn't be able to do? Raw bless you, Eagle Claw. Pegasus Twin Sabers is a level 5 light beast monster with 1000 attack and 2100 defense, granting the equipped monster 1000 attack. They have the same summon effect as Eagle Claw, and once per turn, while equipped to a monster, Pegasus can negate a monster effect activated on your opponent's field. You're not going to be stopping any hand traps, but it can stun an opponent's monster while trying to set up their board, or keep retaliation at bay if you have to try and break a board or build one of your own. And I'm going to stop this section right now, because the longer I stay here, the larger larger the possibility I make a sus joke, and I'm not gonna say I'm better than that, but I am afraid what will happen to the comment section if I do. Now we have the ones that can only be equipped to number C39 Utopia Ray. They can be equipped from the hand, but they can't be equipped from the field. Phoenix Bow is a level 3 fire winged beast monster with 1100 attack and 0 defense, granting the equipped monster 1100 attack. When the equipped monster destroys a monster by battle, Phoenix Bow burns your opponent for 1000. This is a pretty neat inclusion, especially since Ray is already lowering your opponent's attack, so why not slap on a few extra points of damage to help things along? But since it doesn't do much to advance your game plan, and there are much better ways to burn for much more, I'm actually feeling rather cold towards it. Unicorn Spear is a level 4 light beast monster with 1900 attack and 0 defense, granting the equipped monster 1900 attack. And if the equipped monster battles an opponent's monster, that enemy monster has its effects negated during the battle phase only. So hey, another way to punch through things that are normally immune to battle destruction, and pumps Ray up to an astonishing 4400 attack. But we do have effects in theme that can accomplish the same thing without relying on an equipped card, especially when it comes to utilizing more powerful utopias, so really, I just don't get the point. This next card's a bit of a weird one. Dark Zexal Weapon Chimera Clad is a level 1 Dark Fiend monster with 0 attack and defense, and can equip itself to any of your number C39 utopias from your hand or field. The equipped monster can't be destroyed by battle, and at the end of the damage step, when the equipped monster attacks an opponent's monster, but that monster wasn't destroyed by that battle, you can make that opponent's monster's attack zero permanently. And if you do, the equipped monster can attack the same monster once again in a row. Chimera Clad makes it so your C39s can beat basically anything in combat eventually, and can actually punish your opponent for having a weaker monster that has an effect that keeps it immune to battle destruction, by getting to deal damage to it twice. If Utopias didn't make it a point to gain so much attack power, I can see this having a lot of utility, but as it is now, arguments for its inclusion are hardly ironclad. And if there's a dark weapon, there so too must be a light. Shining Zexal Weapon Fenrir Sword is a level 4 light beast monster with 1800 attack and 1100 defense. When normal summoned, you can target a ZW card you control that's an equipped card and special summon it in defense position, which can help make another Xyz in a pinch. They can also be equipped to any Utopia monster from your hand. If the equipped monster destroys another by battle and sends it to the grave, you can target a ZW monster in your grave and add it to your hand. We do have plenty of level 4 ZWs, so it's a great way to pivot into other lines of play, or get back any ZWs you lost so your Utopia's armed and armored, which makes this another easy candidate for Yu-Gi-Oh's good Dogi Brigade. Welcome to the park, buddy. Ultimate Shield is a level 4 Earth Aqua Monster with 0 attack and 2000 defense, and when normal summoned, you can target one of your banished Xyz monsters and special summon them in defense position. They can also equip to a Utopia you control while they're on the field, granting the equipped monster 2000 defense. So if any of your Utopias get banished, say by the effect of Door of Destiny, Ultimate Shield can get them back, as well as providing a substantial defense boost to keep them safe for the turn. Or you can just rank it up into something else and save the shield for another Xyz summon. But no matter what, there are great great way to start a shell of a play. V Salamander is a level 4 fire spellcaster monster with 1500 attack and 1300 defense. When normal summoned, you can target any Utopia monster in your grave and special summon it, and while Salamander is on the field, it can target a Utopia Ray V specifically and equip to it. Once per turn, while equipped to a monster, Salamander can detach a material from its equipped monster to negate that monster's effects permanently, and if you do, destroy all monsters your opponent controls, and if you do that, burn your opponent for 1000 damage for each monster destroyed that way. Holy smokes, this card is terrifying. Previously, you'd need some kind of combo to get a new material under the Ray V if you wanted to activate it post-revival, but now you have Zexal Field, so there's nothing getting in the way of this very powerful Raigeki. It's kind of a shame that it only works on a single form and doesn't really mix in to the rest of the support, because it's technically not a Zexal weapon, but I figured they were close enough for inclusion. What got under my skin was the typing, like, how is this a spellcaster? It's literally a reptile. But then it clicked. The Salamander is a Lizard Wizard. 
We've seen a bunch of different Zexal weapons up to this point, one of them wasn't even a ZW, but none have been as offbeat as these, because we've got equipped monsters that live in the extra deck. Leo Arms is a rank 5 light beast monster with 3000 attack and 1200 defense, requiring any two level 5 monsters as material. They can't attack directly, and can detach a material to add a ZW monster from your deck to your hand. While on the field, they can equip themselves to a Utopia monster you control, granting them 3000 attack. During your battle phase, if the equipped monster attacked, you can send Leo Arms to the grave to allow that monster to make a second attack against a monster during that battle phase. Adding an extra 3000 attack to any Utopia demands an answer, and while they can't attack directly, Leo Arms still makes for a great companion on the battlefield, especially since its search effect makes it two Zexal weapons for one. What's better than one battle pet? Two battle pets! Dragonic Halberd is a rank 5 dark dragon monster with 3000 attack and 1200 defense, requiring any two level 5 monsters as material. They also can't attack directly, and can also equip to a Utopia to grant it 3000 attack, and can detach a material from itself to add a Zexal Speller Trap from your deck to your hand. Also, if the monster they're equipped to destroys a monster by battle, Halberd can special summon any number of Zexal weapons equipped to that monster. While the Ixiz weapons can't attack directly, that isn't the case for all the other ones, so you can swing in for big damage, summon out all your little critters, swing in for more damage, and if the game is somehow not over by this point, you can just re-equip whichever ones you have the option for. You'll be swapping monsters in and out of your back row so much, you'll be giving Plunder Patrol a run for their booty. And now it's time to revisit some Utopia Xyz monsters, now that we've covered all the Zexal weapons. Leo Utopia Ray is a rank 5 monster with 2500 attack and 2000 defense, requiring any three level 5 monsters as material, and is always treated as number C39 Utopia Ray, so be careful with your deck lists, folks. But on the plus side, this means you can also equip all the Ray specific ZWs. Once per turn, they can detach a material to equip any ZW from your deck or extra deck as if it was by their own effect, cutting out a lot of the hassle and getting them onto the field. And bonus, that effect and activation cannot be negated. Also once per turn, while equipped with a ZW monster card as a quick effect, you can target an effect monster your opponent controls and negate its effect and cut its attack in half permanently. This can get out of hand really quickly, as they can equip Pegasus for another monster negate while making it a 3500 attack monster. It's a solid addition to the lineup, but it's unfortunate that, because they're a Leo, Tauruses and Scorpios just don't interact well with them. Hey, don't look at me, that's just the astrology talking, and that's just science. Ultimate Dragonic Utopia Ray is a rank 5 monster with 2500 attack and 2000 defense, requiring any three level 5 monsters as material, and also always counts as a number C39 Utopia Ray. Dang, this name is getting really crowded. Once per turn, when a card or effect is activated that targets this card, or when this card is targeted for an attack as a quick effect, you can equip a ZW monster from your hand or deck to this card as if it was by that card's effect. Once per turn, you can detach a material from this card, then target face-up cards your opponent controls up to the number of ZW monsters equipped to Dragonic Ray and negate their effects permanently. So now we have a mass negate that not only hits monsters, but also pesky floodgates and other non-monster cards. And note that it doesn't have to be your opponent that targets a Dragonic Utopia to get the equip. So by giving them one Zexal weapon, they get another. With that kind of power, you'll be able to strip your opponent of their effects and pierce right through their defenses. Alright, now let's cover some more general Utopia support. Ixiz Agent is a level 2 light spellcaster monster with 900 attack and 300 defense, and if they're in the grave, they can target a Utopia Ixiz monster you control and attach to them as Ixiz material, but you can only use this once per duel. We've gotten a lot of effects in recent years that have helped to put material under revived Ixiz monsters, but back in the old days, there weren't a lot of options. Agent doesn't really do much to advance your game plan, so it's not an integral part of the theme, but can get a Utopia back on its feet when all else fails, so you may want to think about running them just in suit case. There's also another team of Zexal monsters, the Zexal Servants. Vanish Sage is a level 1 light warrior monster with 500 attack and 100 defense, and if you control a Utopia monster, they can draw you a card. Also, if a monster you control is banished during the battle phase, except during the damage step, you can banish Vanish from the field, then target one of those banished monsters. You special summon that monster, and if you do, banish a monster your opponent controls with 3000 attack or less. But you can only use one effect per turn, and only once per turn. The second effect is rather odd, but is meant to reference some anime shenanigans. I like that it draws you a card, and while it's a shame it doesn't line up cleanly with other levels for Xyz summoning, if Link summoning is still available, you can get the draw, then turn them into a Link Karibo. Though I have a feeling investing so much for a single draw is a quick way to make your chances of victory disappear. 
Ascended Sage is a level 4 light warrior monster with 900 attack and 300 defense, and if you control no cards whatsoever, you can special summon them from your hand. And a Utopia Xyz monster using this card as material gains an effect where, if Xyz summoned, you can add a rank up magic normal spell from your deck to your hand. They pair very well with Armed Sage, another level 4 light warrior monster, having 300 attack and 900 defense. And if the only monster you control is a level 4 monster, except another copy of itself, you can special summon them from your hand. Put Ascended and Armed together, and you can make a rank 4 without needing your normal summon. When a Utopia Xyz monster is made using Armed Sage, it gains an effect where, when Xyz summoned, you can add a ZW monster from your deck to your hand. So using both, you can make standard Utopia, search the ZW of your choice, as well as Zexal Force to make the Utopia Ray of your choice, and now they're decked out with Zexal Weapons, the perfect way to serve up a winning play. Ouroboros Sage is a level 3 Dark Warrior monster with 600 attack and 0 defense, and when normal summoned, you can activate an effect where, you can only declare 1 attack for the rest of the turn, also special summon a non-light number monster from your grave, but its effects are negated, and if you do, equip a Roboros and a Utopia monster you control to this number monster, each of which having an effect giving the equipped monster 1700 attack for a total boost of 3400. When the monster equipped with a Roboros by this effect declares an attack on an opponent's monster, you can double the equipped monster's current attack, but it's destroyed during the end phase. Once again, very strange effect, but that's largely due to it being an anime reference. This fits in very well with any version of the deck that focuses on number monsters rather than Utopia, though you could make a case for running Antitopian to help enable this without dipping too far outside the card pool. And those boosts aren't for nothing. If the equipped monster has a base 1600 attack, then it's going to end up being 5000, and that's before or it gets doubled. And if you can prevent the self-destruction, you can do that again next turn. But playing this card really makes me hungry for some snake tail, and I just don't know why. They've also got their own Xyz monster, Utopic Sage. They're a rank 4 monster with 2000 attack and 2500 defense, requiring any two level 4 monsters as material. They can detach two material from them to special summon a ZW or ZS monster from your deck. Also for the rest of the turn, you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck except Xyz monsters, and you can't attack except with number monsters. Also, if a Utopia and or Utopic monster you control whose original attribute is light, except another copy of itself, would be destroyed by battle, you can banish Utopic Sage from your field or grave instead. The ZS don't really strike me as good targets for this effect, but getting a free Zexal weapon is pretty keen, especially if it's Eagle Claw or Pegasus Twin Saber, and the more ways to protect your boss monster, the better. It's clearly an excellent member of the staff. We've also got an interesting monster that's a mix between Yuma and Yuya's cards. Magician of Hope is a rank 4 light spellcaster pendulum Xyz monster with 2500 attack and 2000 defense, requiring any two level 4 monsters as material. They can be pendulum summoned from the face of extra deck if you can do so for level 4s, and you can detach a material from them to special summon any level 7 or lower pendulum monster from your hand in defense position, its effects are negated, then Hope Magician is set to the pendulum zone. Also, if Pendulum Summoned, you can target a Pendulum Monster in your grave and attach it to Hope Magician as material. And as a Pendulum card, once per turn, when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can negate the attack, then destroy Hope Magician. It certainly got more style than substance. If you're trying to get a level 7 monster out of your hand in a Pendulum deck, there might be more pressing issues at hand, but I'm certainly not complaining. I love seeing cards that mix up the aesthetics and effects of iconic characters, and I hope to get to see more in the future. Zexal Catapult is a normal spell that special summons a ZW or ZS monster from your hand. Then if you control a Utopia monster, you can change the levels of all face-up monsters you currently control to 4 or 5. And if Catapult is in your grave, except the turn it was sent to the grave, you can banish Catapult and a ZW or ZS monster from your grave to target an opponent's card and destroy it. The first effect isn't too exciting, the modern ZSs are meant to use their own summoning effect, and most ZWs can be equipped from the hand, with other effects handling the equipment of the more cumbersome ones. But sometimes you just gotta put material onto the board, and it does help you modulate your levels to summon the extra deck Zexal weapons to get their stupendous effects. And for all the issues I have about the front half of this card, the back half half is pretty nice, giving you spot removal to help clear out an annoying card or bait out a negate. And bonus, if your opponent is running Castle of Dark Illusions, you can blow it up and win the game, so that's a huge plus. Zexal Construction is a normal spell that has you revealing any card in your hand, and if you do, you add a ZS Monster, ZW Monster, Zexal Speller Trap, Rank Up Magic Spell, or Rank Down Magic Spell from your deck to your hand, then shuffle the revealed card into your deck. It's unfortunately a minus one, but it's also kind of a blessing in disguise. There's a lot of garnets you play, and Zexal Construction can actually put it back into your deck. 
It can also set up the right Zexal Servant monster to open your turn with, or the proper rank up magic in any theme to make sure you get to your most powerful boss monster. But most importantly, it proves something I've been saying about Yu-Gi-Oh for a long time. Spells, traps, monsters, they're not some immutable facet of the universe, they're a Zexal construct. Sukumo Slash is a quick play spell you can activate when one of your monsters attacks a monster with a higher attack than it during damage calculation. Your battling monster gains attack equal to the difference between your life points and your opponents during that damage calculation only. Important note, it doesn't say who has to have the higher life points, so if you're ahead, you still gain an enormous boost to close out the game. But more likely than not, with all the effects that cost you life points in this theme, you'll be the one on the back foot. But that's not such a bad thing, as even a difference of a thousand or two can make the difference in battle. Though it it does suck it can only be activated when you initiate the attack, and doesn't give you the option to do so when being attacked. Still, it's a great way to swing over a monster while dealing a ton of damage, so it gets a solid 9 out of 10. Our last card is High Five the Sky, a normal trap you can only activate during your battle phase. You target a face-up Xyz monster that attacked this turn, and it can make a second attack during that battle phase. And if it does so, your opponent can't activate cards or effects until the end of the damage step. This also lacks the On Monsters clause, so you can use this to attack directly for a surprise win. But the fact that it's a trap card that you can only activate on your turn does hurt its viability. But hey, when did something like playability get in the way of stopping people from playing cool cards? Attacking for game out of nowhere like that while stunning your opponent is totally in the Katabingu spirit. So that's all the Utopia cards, but what do we do with them? Well, our Xyz monsters certainly aren't shy about getting big attack points and dealing a lot of burn damage. The theme's gotten a lot better at obtaining negation, but won't be sufficient to play control anytime soon. We have just enough negation to help put a big attack together, so we're as committed to aggro as we've ever been. So here's what a good opener can look like for you. Start out with both Ascended and Armed Sage in your hand. You can replace either of these with a Reinforcement of the Army, or Zexal Construction if you have a spare card in hand. Special summon both of them, then overlay for Utopia proper. This will trigger both Sages, getting you a Rank Up Magic Zexal Force and a ZW Lightning Blade. Alternatively, you can overlay them into a Utopia Double just in case your opponent has some kind of negation as the quick effect change into Utopia Proper will dodge that targeted negation. It's also a great way to get more value out of Xyz Change Tactics if you have that in your hand as well. Once you've gotten all the draws you can, use Zexal Force to make Leo Utopia Ray, stacking the Xyz weapon of your choice, then drawing into it with Change Tactics if it's live. Use Leo's effect to attach Pegasus Twin Sabers from the deck, as well as the ZW you drew off the top. Now you have a 4700 attack Leo with two on-field monster negations, with all your ZWs protected, with an additional ZW if you drew it, which is likely going to be Tornado Bringer, which provides you targeting protection. If you had Xyz Change Tactics, then you drew several cards, and since none of this utilized your normal summon, you can use this combo along with the Onomat one from the last video. Though because of how these Zexal Servants work, this combo would have to go first. And that's all I've got to say about Utopia. It's been a wild ride seeing how the theme has evolved, not just over a few formats, but over years of design decisions. And through it all, it's maintained as much of an anime feel as it ever has. Making extra deck monsters that are equip spells, negating attacks to make even bigger attacks, building up a single monster with equips and Xyz evolutions, every facet of this deck exudes the kind of energy that I feel has drawn people to Yu-Gi-Oh for years, and I hope it does so for many more to come. There are so many cool things you can do with this deck, but the choice, ultimately, comes down to you. Topia. But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Do you have a favorite Utopia moment, either from the anime or from your time playing it? And is there anything you hope they'll add to the theme in the future? Let me know in the comments, and if you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video around. It really does a lot to help me out. I'd also like to take this time to thank my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commander, CozyBoat275, Nebula Navigators, Benjamin Meisner, Billy Spence, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh, Gloomba331, Panther J, Shep Shao Shep, The Wizard Moose, and The Fresh Prince of Conair, Cosmic Crusaders, Chaz Ghost, Colin Todd, George Schaefer, Hakatana, The Legendary Raven, and Panda PLS, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. If you like what you saw and want to fund the future of this channel, please consider joining as a YouTube member, it's basically like a Twitch sub, or supporting me on Patreon, all of which come with some pretty sweet perks. And if this is my first video you've seen on the subject, then check out part one where I go over Yuma's other well-known theme, the Onomats. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye